and I'm going to be brief with you today. But I thought about the different presidents we had in recent history, and probably some, some the younger ones can't remember, but and how for us as a people, we had, you know, we put our hope in some people and some things. And I thought probably one of the first would have been maybe Bill Clinton. Because he was so cool. He was so cool. You know, he played the saxophone. And, you know, we thought he was for us. And he mixed it up with people. Okay, I thought he was telling me mix it up. <laughs> and, and yeah, and he would, he would, you know, get out there with people and he just seemed to be, okay, one of these guys who was really for us. And then you go back and you look at some of the things that happened under his, uh, his time in office and it looked like it didn't serve as well. And then we had our hope in modern day President Obama. And we just knew under Obama and Biden administration, some things were going to happen in our favor and we were going to be better off as a result of it. Then we kind of figured out eight years doesn't seem to be long enough to really move that ship all that much. It's like a just a huge ship you got to turn around. And it seemed like there were some things that we could have had done that maybe we didn't have done in our lives and uh, just sort of kind of gave up hope in that regard. Then you had, oh my goodness, you have Biden out there. And I mean, you, Harris, oh my goodness, that really looked like things going to change for us. And we started getting money. You were getting money and groceries and all that sort of stuff. But a lot of times we stop and we look we're like, hmm, Things hadn't changed for us all that much. Things hadn't changed for us all that much. But what I found out is that you can't put your hope and confidence in man. You got to put your hope and confidence in God. See, God has a way of making things happening, happen for us, a way of making things happen for us when we don't see it. A lot of times we say he makes a way out of no way. There's a way. He's the way. There is a way. Sometimes we don't see it. Our eyes have been blinded to it. Sometimes the Lord has got to open our eyes to it. But see, God promised us a righteous branch. God promised us. God promised us a righteous branch. And whenever we read his word, we see where he promised to take care of us. He promised to supply our every need. He promised to give us the desires of our hearts if we delight ourselves in him. He promised us some things. We talked about him last week as being that Messiah. The hope, the hope, the hope. See, we're looking at Jeremiah now. Last week we looked at Isaiah. We're looking at Jeremiah now. And Jeremiah, he, he came a little bit later. So somewhere we'll say about 630 B.C. where uh, Isaiah was around 700 B.C. So about 630, people say anywhere between 630 and probably 580 B.C. That this is written. And Jeremiah had a situation. He had a situation where the king and, and the government and all, and people wanted him to say everything was okay. Wanted him to say everything is okay. See, sometimes we, we, want, to, we want to be decorated as uh, giant slayers, but we're having trouble with <laughs> some things. So the king wanted to be represented as being, you know, okay, and things were going well with him, and the people were okay. But Jeremiah had a job to do. And Jeremiah had to come in and say, you know what? We're not obeying God. Judah is not doing what we should do. And we're going to go into captivity. Israel, the Syrians had already taken Israel. But Judah was going to go into Babylonian captivity. And things got so bad, not only did they go into captivity. Now, Jeremiah's, Jeremiah prophesies it. And then Jeremiah lives it. Then he lives it. And you know what? Sometimes it's kind of it's kind of hard on you when you think, well, I, I tried to do it right. I, I tried to do do the right thing and I'm having to go into captivity. But God had a plan. God had a plan and God had a promise. 
and, 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 and God's promise and God's plan was not for them to remain in captivity, but still make a way for them. See, a lot of times we can't we can't visualize things spiritually if we haven't seen things naturally. So they saw and they enjoyed things on the in, in, on the natural scene. They they were brought out of Egypt and then they were there in the wilderness till they became a people. And then they, they lived there and went to the promised land and lived there in the promised land. But they would not obey God. And he allowed them to go into captivity. But they had the hope and they had the stories. See, when they were living it, sometimes when we're living it, it doesn't seem that important. Sometimes whenever we're doing things, we're just kind of flipping about it. We're not taking it as seriously as we need to take it. Sometimes it, it doesn't seem that important when we're in the moment. But then when you reflect back, we talked about that a little bit last week. Sometimes you reflect back and say, that was the good old days. See, they at least had that, that they knew what God could do. They knew what God could do. God could bring them out, could let them pass through the sea unharmed. God could take them there in the wilderness, shoes not even wear out. Clothes not even wear out 40 years. God could take them into a promised land. Let them walk around the cities and the walls come down. They at least had those stories. It's much like our testimony. And do we have a testimony? Do you have a testimony? Do you have a testimony of what God has done for you in the past? Do you have a testimony of who God is? What God could be in someone? Do you have a testimony? They at least had this in their history. They could say who God is. So whenever they went into the difficult times, like many of us, whenever we go into those difficult times, we may have to say, you know what? I may be thrown in the fire, but I know one who could bring me out. I may be thrown in the lion's den, but I know one who could bring me out. I may have to endure some heartaches and some hard times, but I know one who could bring me out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God promised a righteous branch. He promised, he, he promised that one was going to spring up and there would be no doubt. And, and see, that's that when Jesus came on the scene, there was no doubt that he was the one. When he came on the scene, and it was not because of, of, of his family, because many of them were around there saying, Isn't this the son of Joseph? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this just just any old guy? Sometimes they think that about us. Isn't that just you? <laughs> Isn't, look, I know you. I know where you, where you were born. I know how you were raised. I know you. But God makes the difference. God makes the difference. See, Jesus was, this is, this is what happened. Jesus, whenever he came on the scene, there were so many things that had to happen. Now we're talking to Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. Last week, we talked about the eagle eye prophet. Certain things had to happen. They had to be a, uh, he had to be born of a virgin. There's certain things that had to happen. Certain things had to come together. And, and he fulfilled all these prophecies. So whenever Jesus came on the scene, yes, we know that Elijah had, he had eight miracles that's recorded. And Elijah has 16 miracles that's recorded. And it looks like that was some, some great things that were happening. But Jesus came on the scene and he was healing. And he was delivering. And he was setting free. And he would tell them, go and sin no more. He had the power to forgive sin. Nobody else had the power to forgive sin. But Jesus. Jesus and, and some of the people got, they got beside himself. Who is, who is he? When he first came on the scene, saying the time has come. The time has come. The time is here. Who is he? He's speaking as one with authority. Well, he is Jesus. He is the Messiah. He is the anointed one, the one we've been waiting for, waiting for, hoping for. Unfortunately, so many people sold him short. Unfortunately, so many people were looking for that, that, that man to come in the flesh and, and to save them when it comes down to the government. They were looking for that David. Whenever you read these scriptures out of the Sunday school lesson, they were looking for a David to come and rescue them physically. They had no idea that they needed to be rescued spiritually. A lot of times we're fighting a, ba a battle and we think it's a physical battle. And it's not. 
It's not a, it's not a natural battle. It's not a carnal battle. It's a spiritual battle. But if we put our hope and we put our trust in the Lord and, and understand that he is God and he is God alone. He is the Lord. He is God who allowed himself to come down here to earth. And the way to do it, to be able to communicate to man was to take on flesh, to take on a body, to be born, to be born and go through the same things that we go through experience the same things that we experience that allow himself as sacrifice and the great high priest to be sacrificed for us as our Messiah. So I'm just going to read these scriptures and hopefully that will bring understanding to the scriptures. Jeremiah the weeping prophet over in the 23rd chapter says, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy the scattered, the sheep of my pasture, said the Lord. Whenever Jesus showed up on the scene, Jesus' heart was broken. He said he saw the people as sheep scattered. Sheep scattered without a shepherd. And that's this, this pasture. Whenever you study that word pasture, it's really talking about shepherd. Shepherding. Someone who's supposed to be there to care for you. Someone who's supposed to be there to make sure that you're okay. Now, we're all God's people, but they had a responsibility. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, said the Lord, and I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them and will bring them again to their foes, and they shall be fruitful in increase. So these people have hope. We're in captivity, but the Lord is going to bring us out. Now, now, now whenever we, we look at that, let's think about these being captive sometimes in our minds. Sometimes we've been, we're captive in our flesh, having strongholds. Sometimes we're captive in our spirit and we can't freely operate. But God is going to release us from that. And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. We don't have to worry about who's president. We don't have to worry about who's king. We don't have to worry about who has their finger on that button. We don't have to worry about that. In his days, Judah shall be safe and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby whereby he shall be called the Lord, our righteousness, the Lord, our righteousness. Amen. I'm going to leave you with that 23rd chapter, but you can go back and read that 33rd at your leisure. The word of the Lord is blessed.